Hello and welcome to the show. This week's Fail Race versus the Community is, well it was supposed to be pins, uh, Pincers? Pintos versus Pacers. There we go, I combined the two of them in one. Uh, it was supposed to be Pintos versus Pacers. However, since both of them are DLCs, I also allowed the Gremlins to run as there is a humongous crash <laughs> in the first corner here. Um, I'm not entirely sure what happened. There, there there was one uh, gremlin either he forgot that we were going on the short track and went to take the normal layout which is possible it happens if you ever race Nürburgring shorts in an online lobby there is always one person it's guaranteed that one person will forget that uh, <laughs> they're running the short circuit or uh, he hit a bump and it is quite bumpy down that first section and lost control and ended up going kind of straight on both the possibilities I don't actually I'm not actually sure when I watched the replays it looks like it could have been uh, just hitting a bump because these cars while you know, they're not the fastest car in the world, they are E-Class, they aren't particularly good handling either. So if you hit a bump awkwardly, it is quite possible that it fling you off in a random direction. And yeah, the, the, the first corner there was a humongous crash. I think everybody from 7th backwards had considerable damage. Um, this, this is the 4th, 5th and 6th. Uh, these guys, we all managed to get through it okay we all survived that, that first lap mayhem just because we were high enough um, up on the starting order and the Pinto here is making its way back through the order this Pinto there was only I think two Pintos the entire evening um, that were racing however this one here well the other one got unlucky he got broken uh, at the first lap but this one here did look pretty damn quick there are a few paces running uh, the paces were good handling uh, I, was, I was driving a pacer and they handle very very well they just don't have the straight line speed of the gremlins and that was making it very hard to keep up with them and while yes this is a short track there are still straights you do still need acceleration you do still need a uh, straight line speed so yeah the pacers did struggle a little bit however that doesn't mean that uh, they weren't in some close races uh, this is the battle of the broken I, I believe this is for around eighth or something um, basically everybody I think the guy in seventh had damage but stayed out and everyone further back came into the pits because it was a humongous first lap incident however that did mean that when they came out of the pits they were all fairly close together so they could all race each other and they were still having good races you can see we've got a couple of paces and the other Pinto are all fairly close on the track so just because they were broken doesn't mean they couldn't have a good race now going through the pits means you can fix all the mechanical problems so your gearbox your engine your driveline etc but you keep the aero damage and while no these cars don't rely massively on aero they are st still going to slow you down which means they weren't likely to catch up to the lead group however they can still have a good battle they can still race with each other as is being demonstrated here the Pinto has made his way past one of the paces and then promptly runs quite wide in the final corner allowing the pacer to get straight back past and then the pacer I'm not sure if there's a little touch there or whether the pacer got it wrong on his own and the Pinto is back in front but yeah just because your car was damaged doesn't mean that you can't have an enjoyable race admittedly it's probably not going to be for the lead but eh, I, I would rather be in a close race um, than being running around in the front on my own and being fairly bored um, uh, in this race though I wasn't running around at the front on my own I was defending like mad from very very fast gremlins I say very fast um, yeah <laughs> I was having a tough time trying to keep these two cars behind me and while yes I have better grip I have better handling I have slightly better brakes and everything uh, I was struggling to keep these cars behind me I was trying everything I could I was hoping that because the two of them were going to be kind of near each other they're going to battle as well and slow each other down it's always helpful um, <laughs> if you're the leader and you're defending that you've got two cars behind you rather than just one if you've got one one car behind you he can just focus on attacking you it whereas if there's two he has to focus on attacking and defending both at the same time um but that wasn't kind of wasn't the case i think the car behind me was slightly faster the the white uh, gremlin was a little bit faster and i was under constant attack pretty much i'm going very very defensive um into this final corner trying everything i can to keep this gremlin behind me and he just drives straight around the outside that's 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 a pretty damn good <laughs> overtake there absolutely nothing i can do about that one now i know that uh, i'm in trouble i just haven't got the overall speed really to keep up with these gremlins around here so i know i have to get this place back very very quickly if there's any chance of me winning so i have a lunge into the third quarter can't quite get my car far enough alongside him and then he's going to out accelerate me out of the corner so now my my primary concern is i've got to keep the other gremlin behind me the pinto is also catching up as well as i know there's there's not a huge amount of chance that i'm going to actually catch and pass the gremlin in front of me sure enough this is a lap or two later i kept up with them which i was pretty impressed with but uh, there was not much uh, i could do about the gremlin in front however luckily for me the gremlin behind me had a very big and spectacular roll through there that is pretty damn impressive i think there's about three rolls in there 
Now, I wasn't expecting to see cars uh, on their roof. That corner there, because the corners, the, the road's slightly off camber, the curb's pretty big, it, it, you can roll cars. I've seen plenty of cars roll through that. I didn't expect to see these cars roll. They're not really that fast. And while, of course, some guys are running race tires and all that thing, I wasn't expecting to see them uh, on their roof into the first corner. We go back to the Battle of the Broken, and this is for seventh place now. Again, it's always very hard with these to tell how much damage um, people have on their cars. I've said before, with the telemetry on the replays being a little bit unreliable, as a pacer trying to go the very long way around, you're not, like, not going to go around the outside there. There's a bit of a rally cross going on as well. Um, yeah, it's very hard to tell how much damage people have on their cars because the telemetry goes funny. Um, so I don't know what levels of aero damage um, these guys had, but I do know that this gremlin uh, didn't go into the pits while all the other guys didn't. I think he had probably slightly more damage, which is why it was fairly straightforward for the pacers, uh, or for that pacer, that clip, uh, to get past and the other guys were going to follow suit. Um, yeah, it's, it's always tricky with these replays uh, telling damage on them. So it's, yeah, it's hard for me to say quite what goes on with some of the cars. Uh, anyway, back towards the front, uh, me in second, I was slightly concerned about the Pinto, I was holding a fair gap to him, um, but yeah, he was pretty damn quick, however, everything went wrong for me as we come, I don't know what corner number this is, uh, I tried to go around, um, I tried to lap a couple of cars that were battling, which probably wasn't the cleverest idea I've ever had. Uh, to try to go around the outside of two cars who are battling. Not sure if they actually lagged into each other, which is what pushed them wide away, or they just had a crash. And I got collected in it, um, which, yeah, dropped me down to third. I didn't have any major damage. I just lost one of the positions. But at the front, it was a fairly straightforward race uh, after he got into the lead. This guy came from a midfield. I think he was like seven. I mean, you, you followed him on the opening lap. He managed to avoid all of the chaos and make his way to the front. There's a little bit of a slide as he comes around the corner, final corner. But, uh, yeah, it was a good race uh, from the gremlin as he takes the win the pinto the well one of two pintos came second uh, while i ended up in third we go on to race number two now at the sakuba short circuit i was picking all the the very short circuits for this one because we don't often use uh, some of these also because these cars are slow i'd rather do like 10 laps of a short circuit than three laps of a really long circuit it makes things more interesting i think anyway uh, it was all very busy we were about three wide uh, through, through that first corner and then a bizarre lag spike went on further back I think it only got two cars it might have been two or three but uh, yeah I don't know what on earth went on there strange lagginess occurred and it killed a couple of cars uh, can't really do much about that uh, unfortunately I then had a strange incident with a gremlin I think a very similar thing happened to me last week with the Salikas as well I think it's because I was running a DLC car it could well have been a black borer on his screen as I get turned around I had a very eventful first lap um, I think uh, as I was driving a DLC car it would have been a black borer on his screen and the dimensions of that are slightly different to the actual car so sometimes they think they have enough space to come across in front of you when they actually don't that was that's what I would that's what I imagine uh, has happened there because yeah I well on my screen it didn't look like I would touched him but he went off as if I did so yeah it's very hard to say what goes on um, with that anyway this is for second place there was a big old train uh, all fighting over second place the guy at the Pinto that had led had just gone off the start line he avoid, avoided all the chaos and was long in the distance while these are here all scrapped over second um, yeah of course once you're all scrapping you're going to be slowing each other down as well uh, we have the white and blue and red uh, Kremlin is trying to go all the way around the outside of the final corner that is a long way <laughs> to go around there as they come onto the front straight there's another Gremlin up the inside as well they're going to go three wide into the first corner that's very brave I wouldn't want to be in the middle of that um, <laughs> as the guy in the, the white and blue and red one has got all the way around the outside again uh, that's twice into Two corners now they're all trying to go three wide again into the hairpin that's not likely to work um, and amazingly everybody gets away with it with only sort of minor minor scrapings that's a, that, for me that's probably the best overtaking maneuver of the evening I'm not quite sure who overtake who and where there was so much going on in that but that was a very very good racing for all three of them and um, or all five of them in fact there was, a, there was a battle going on behind them as well um, for everybody to get away without any incidences at all in that no damage as far as I'm aware yeah that's, that's a pretty damn impressive um, piece of driving for everybody involved that everybody involved in that there we go that was English I think uh, they carried on uh, squabbling over what is essentially second place um, yeah this was the most interesting thing uh, going on on track at this point there was a few 
slightly damaged cars further back, uh, me being one of them somewhere, I can't remember where I was. Um, however, the gremlin who rolled in the first race was going to roll in the second race as well, in far less spectacular style this time round. Again, this is another corner which I have seen cars roll on, but it's not particularly prolific for having cars rolling on, um, and I wasn't expecting to see these cars on their roofs. I'm not sure what caused that one <laughs> to roll. It was a bit of a bit of an odd one. Uh, anyway, this will. There was an incident further up, I'm not quite sure what happened between, I think, a Pacer and a Gremlin, uh, which meant that we now became the battle for, I think this was fourth, as this was time. It's my turn to go all the way around the outside at the final corner. While my car wasn't very good in a straight line, it did have plenty of grip, and that does help uh, when you come to try and do that manoeuvre. If you try to go around the outside of somebody, you really need to have the car with a much superior grip, and I managed to make the move stick as I run a little bit wide and get the cameraman. My bad. Um, yeah, there was some good racing in this one. Uh, I, as I've said many times, I like racing the lower class car, and with these being E-Class, um, there was a lot of close racing, a lot of close battles going on, uh, which is what I like to see when I when I come to do one of these. I'm now trying to find a way past, I think this is the battle for fourth now, and you can see the superior grip of the pacer as we come through here. I can just hold a tighter line uh, than the Gremlin. As we come onto the back straight, of course, the Gremlins are a little bit faster on the most part, and the Pintos are a little bit faster. However, the straights aren't that long. There's not much they can do with all that extra speed. So I can put my car up the inside and stay there fairly safely. Again, you can see the amount of grip I have compared to the Gremlins as he understeers wide. Um, yeah, the Pacers were pretty good at this track, although they do just lack that little bit of speed that, uh, that would be quite nice. This is for the battle for second now. As I said, the Pinto was long, long gone um, at the front. Further back, everything kind of spread itself out as well. Um, we were kind of all fairly close. We could all see each other on the on the road, but there wasn't really any sort of battling, any kind of action going on. Uh, this was the closest sort of race um, on track. As they come up towards the first corner, our guy in second is going fairly defensive. Um, yeah. Both of these guys, the cars were pretty damn quick. There was not much that any of us further back could do to catch them, but uh, the Pinto was long, long gone in front of them. That Pinto was incredibly quick around here. And we're going to have a dive up the inside at the hair. Please going to squeeze him out a little bit. Somehow they get away with that. I have no idea how they avoided having a crash through there. That was mighty, mighty close with the Gremlin going sideways. Not the thing you want to see in your rear slash side view mirror, depending on what camera angle, etc. you're using. To see a Gremlin come out of the corner sliding straight towards you. I suspect that's quite quite scary. Uh, this is another couple of laps on and still they're battling <laughs> over second place. Uh, the car behind him is I, I was a little bit quicker, I would say massively quicker, but it is quicker than him, trying to find a way past, but of course, if you know what you're doing, if you can defend quite well, it is pretty hard to overtake, there's only, well, there's only two really good overtaking spots, and this is one of them. Uh, I'm surprised that uh, the red, white, and blue uh, Gremlin didn't go more defensive into that first corner. He's going to go around the outside. He's going to hold his position. I'm not sure quite how he got away with that. Uh, I think the guy on the inside may have got a little bit of a slide, so he could just about hold on to that position. Uh, yeah, I would have gone a little bit more defensive, and again here, I would probably have gone a little bit more defensive earlier um, as well, but he's still just about holding on to his position. We kind of wait to just look at the, the leader who has had a very lonely uh, and I would guess fairly boring race. I'm not sure where he started. I think he started fairly near the front, just pretty much drove away from everybody. Uh, we didn't have an answer for the Pinto, so the only Pinto in the race is uh, going to take the win. Yeah, not many Pintos turned up <laughs> for this one, uh, but the one that did uh, managed to win. And the Gremlins, well, they was they carried on battling. Uh, this is the final final lap. This is up towards the final corner, and the uh, the white Gremlin is going to go all the way around the outside. That's a long way to go um, around there. However, he is going to manage to make the move stick. Just uh, he's going to beat um, the red, white, and blue one across the line. It was a very good race between them two. Uh, they had some very close racing in that one, and that was about all the excitement. <laughs> of the second race. Further back, it was a little bit more spread out. We move on to our third and final race. This is at the Ladera circuit, one of the hardest tracks to overtake, probably only beaten by a Rally de Postinato, and even then, that might be a little bit easier to overtake on. This track is really very, very tricky <laughs> to overtake on. There wasn't a massive crash at the first corner, which is always good, and as we plow in towards this is probably your best bet for overtaking. Get a good run and then dive up the inside here is the main way you're going to overtake somebody around this circuit because there really is very little braking zones. There is a sort of semi-back straight. However, there is a nasty, nasty chicane in that. And again, a very, very small braking zone. So yeah, overtaking around here 
is very, very tricky. Not impossible, but uh, it is rather tricky. Now, this track does tend to suit the pacers. It suits the cars with the higher levels of grip, uh, which I was pleased with. My pacer was actually useful um, around here, which uh, surprised me a little bit, actually, as, sure, this is a short circuit. It's kind of it's kind of a twisty circuit, but they're not sort of really ultra nasty turns. I would have thought this would have suited the uh, the straight line speed cars more, whereas I would have thought Camino would have suited the sort of handling cars. But there we go. That's just how kind of things panned out. Um, anyway, yeah, there was a rather large train. Uh, this is for fourth and fifth i can't even remember the blooming places uh, we were all trying to find our way past each other i was making my way through the field from a fairly low start position uh, on the grid this was my favorite maneuver of the evening using the extra grip i had in my pacer i was going around the outside of um, all of the other cars that kind of lacked this grip and and i was managing to make the move stick uh, these are very long i normally you wouldn't be able to do that um, but because these cars, everybody had built their cars slightly differently, some have gone for more straight line speed. I'm guessing this gremlin that we're watching now has gone for more straight line speed, as you can see it leaning through the corners, which would suggest uh, standard suspension. Yeah, having the extra grip was quite useful here, there's a little bit of corner cutting going on, uh, because I could do that manoeuvre going around the outside of somebody, and when a track like this it's so hard to overtake on, uh, yeah, that, that's quite useful, as somebody gets a move done into the first corner. Yeah, it, the track limits around here, are. Uh, everybody uses all of the kerb, and maybe even a little bit more, it's just what gets done around here, because it's the only way you're really going to find a space to overtake, it's, it really is quite that narrow, and quite that twisty. There was plenty of battles going on, this uh, gremlin seems to be hold oh, say holding up, that's probably a little bit harsh, but um, yeah, there, he, was in, he was involved in a many a uh, many a battle we're gonna see another pacer is he gonna go around the outside of somebody he's using my move well done uh, fellow pacer is he gonna get the move done he always gun steering a little bit wide and now there's gonna be a gremlin uh, got the inside of the pair of them overtaking can happen here uh, it's not impossible to overtake but it is really very tricky I quite like this track I think it's a nice challenge um, but I'm I won't do very many races on here I'm only using this because these cars are slow enough in the fast cars this track is a nightmare uh, for racing primarily because of that chicane uh, that chicane's really quite nasty um, in the fast cars especially if you're all battling as well very easy to have a big crash through there I am I'm up with the leaders now and I've got a pair of gremlins to contend with I'm trying my favorite maneuver right around the outside and she got it stuck again i was pretty surprised that i managed to make that maneuver stick however that is the strong area of this car is doing is got is the extra grip however when we come on to the back straight and i've got two angry gremlins behind me uh, which is always always fun as we come in towards the final corner you can get overtaken maneuvers done through here it is such a tiny braking zone it's really hard however i am aware of this i'm having to kind of defend again in the first corner I'm having to defend quite heavily, uh, run across the kerb quite a lot, uh, trying to hold this gremlin behind me, but he just got the extra speed, uh, which was proving pretty difficult uh, to defend from when you go too wide through the chicanes. Wouldn't normally uh, want to do that, uh, unless you absolutely have to. However, I am on the inside uh, for this next corner, and I have the extra grip uh, in my pacer, which is always very useful. It means I can hold on to the position for now. And thank you very much to the back marker for staying out of trouble uh, as we all go past them. And now I can make just that little breathing space uh, um, around this corner which means that when it comes to the end of the straight I'm just far enough ahead for them not to be kind of challenging me into that final corner which was really quite useful also as I've said said earlier on it's useful having a third car in there as well the guy behind me is now having to make a choice between attacking and defending and adding that little extra bit of confusion uh, extra kind of decision making is always useful uh, for me in the lead who only has to defend come around the final corner I get a little bit sideways uh, which was one thing about my uh, pacer that I wasn't too happy about it just had this tiny little bit of oversteer that would catch you out and slow you down um, and yeah it caught me out it caught me out on that occasion as we have a gremlin going trying to go around the outside of me into the first corner we're all going to try and go three wide through the chicane that's not normal uh, you don't normally try to do that um, however I managed to get a slightly better drive than the red gremlin and now as you come in towards uh, this corner I dive up the inside and we've all changed places about three times in one lap I think we've, think we've changed places us three more times than the entirety of the Formula 1 grid um, in the last couple of laps yeah it was pretty Pretty damn close, pretty damn exciting racing uh, here at the front, despite the track uh, which we are on. Further back, and we have another pacer uh, trying to make his way through the order. To all fairness to everybody who was driving, as I said, this track doesn't normally generate the most exciting racing, but people were giving it a go. There was there's lots of close close racing going on, maybe not a huge amount of overtaking, but people were certainly trying their best. And we have another pacer here trying to find his way past 
uh, one of the gremlins. I also apologise uh, if I've got gremlin and pacer confused. For some reason, my brain get my brain just calls them all gremlins. So if I've said that at any point in this video, uh, yeah, I apologise for that. Uh, anyway, this pacer here is trying to find his way past um, this gremlin. Uh, yeah, it is it is tricky. Um, is he going to try my, my favourite manoeuvre here and go round the outside of the long corner? Doesn't look like he quite has the grip. Again, everybody's built their cars slightly differently, so some paces might be more built for straight line, some gremlins might be more built for handling, and in this case, the pacer hasn't quite found his way past as of yet. Back towards the front, and the battle continues. This battle continues for the entirety of this 10 minute race. And um, yeah, I was again having to kind of defend a little bit. Wasn't as bad as Camino. I wasn't being like, completely uh, hounded <laughs> by these two gremlins like I was in Camino, but uh, yeah, I was still having to defend him. Of course, once you start defending, you start slowing yourself down. As far as lap time wise goes, all three of us were very, very similar uh, in our fastest lap. But of course, now I've got a gremlin right up behind me. He's got a very good run through these last corners. It goes a little bit sideways. I'm having to defend. I'm defending. I'm slowing myself down. I'm slowing the gremlin behind me down, which means the guy in third um, is also going to stay right with us. And yeah, it keeps all three of us very, very close together for pretty much the entirety of this race you come around the final corner this time it's the gremlin that gets a little bit sideways and now the two gremlins are going to battle each other and this is onto the final lap now i believe this was the kind of the breathing space that i wanted kind of needed as well and um, i need them two to be battling with each other slowing each other down as one of the back markers gets a little bit confused and nearly causes the big incident um, but yeah i was glad that these two were kind of tussling with each other gave me just that little bit of breathing space. I could just get that little bit of a gap uh, as we come through. This is probably your best overtaking opportunity you're going to get. And now I've got a fairly decent gap. Well, decent considering uh, all things considered. Come around my favourite corner here. I can now, again, make it a little bit more of a gap. And I was feeling fairly confident um, at this point that uh, I would be safe as there's only one more over overtaking spot that uh, you're going to get. And that is into the very final corner. And even more fortunately for me, uh, the gremlin behind me just gets it wrong and clatters the curb a little bit too much and goes for a little spin. He can recover, no harm done other than just dropping some time. And uh, yeah, I was pretty pleased to see a spinning gremlin in my rear view mirror at that point. Uh, that, that was all, that's always nice to see. Anyway, it was a it was a very good race, this final one, for us three at the front uh, as I crossed the line to take the win. So despite the fact there are only three cars available to choose for this week's race, uh, all, all the races won by a different car. That's quite impressive, actually. I'm pretty pleased. Um, pretty pleased by that one. Anyway, that is it for this week's race. It was good fun. I do I do like driving the lower class cars. Uh, it's, it's always very interesting. Now, the next Fail Race versus the community is going to be on Thursday, the 10th of October. We are going to be using the Star of the City car Jeep. Loads of people have been saying, or loads of people have been suggesting that we should use one of the various setup challenge cars. I'm going to use the the Star in a Silly Car Jeep because it's actually kind of drivable. It's, you've just got to be very careful with the suspension. That's what makes it difficult, not the fact that it's going to spin out all the time. Uh, so we're going to have a go with that. It could be chaos. It will be chaos. It is, there's no could about it. It will be absolute chaos. But it could be quite entertaining. I will probably have damage on... Uh, cosmetics so you can roll the cars over should you get stuck on your roof because uh, otherwise everybody would be on their roof um, by the end of the races so I think I'll probably be running cosmetic damage on that and um, you can find the car on the fail race storefront you can go download it for free you will require the Jeep Wrangler DLC and um, because that's that's the car <laughs> so yeah that's what I'm going to be doing for the next week's versus community however I'm also going to be running on Saturday the 12th um, I'm going to be running a, uh, what are we going to call it, a, a Gran Turismo 5 Challenge. It's not going to quite be a versus the community yet, because I'm going to record it slightly differently. But um, yeah, we're going to be doing a Gran Turismo 5 Challenge. So if you want to take part in either of these events, you can go to our forums. The versus the community will be under the versus community section. The Gran Turismo Challenge will be under the what's it called official events section so you can find them in there you can sign up in there for the challenges as far as time wise goes both of them will be held at 7 p.m british summertime i think we're still in that uh, on their respective days so that's the time that uh, we shall be doing the races however that is it for today so thank you very much for watching and until next time goodbye <laughs>